So my name is Gri, as you heard. Um, uh, I've now been with Moodle for just over eight months, and it's been a journey of learning, eternal learning. Today I'm possibly not going to talk about as much detail as Martin was hoping that I would, but I want to talk about the process and specifically about how we can get you guys involved in the process. I'm just going to quickly have, uh, learn a little bit about you guys, talk a bit about myself, a bit about the different teams, talk about roadmap processes, what I see as challenges in regards to road mapping in a traditional sense, some of our key initiatives, and then back to how you can get involved with it. First of all, I just wanted to remind ourselves why we're all here. We're all here about empowering educators to improve our world. What is it now? About 10 months ago when I was contacted by Moodle, I couldn't believe my luck that I actually found somebody, a company in Perth, that did exactly what I had identified as my purpose in life, which is to bring quality uh, education to everybody globally. So um, we'll uh, go more into that detail. <clears throat> so I just wanted to get a show of hands of the type of, uh, uh, of who we've got in the room. I know Martin did it earlier today as well, but uh, can I see how many developers we have here? Right, so a few sprinkled through. I think you were all upstairs before, were you? <laughs> uh, educators? And, and, and what about educators in the sort of corporate learning management systems? Oh, that's kind of a few there as well. What have I missed now? Designers, do we have any designers? Oh, cool. Instructional designers as well? Cool. This is good. I, I need all you people to get involved in our roadmap process, right? What have I missed? What, what sort of other, other, other roles have we got around here? What did I miss? IT people. Oh, yeah. There's a few of us around. And, uh, and, and sort of Moodle administrators. Yay. Got a few around here. So, press the wrong button. I really want to explore how we can um, extend the way we're working together now, the way that Martin has set this awesome organization up to involve and engage the community, to be involved in the processes throughout, not just from a developer perspective, but from educators and from design and testing things. That photo is from where I come from. So I was born about 10, uh, 100 kilometers south of, uh, of the Arctic, Arctic Circle in Norway. Um, my teachers are te uh, my teachers. My parents are teachers. My grandparents are teachers. For whatever reason, I decided not to become a teacher, so I studied computer science instead. Um, interesting, um, interesting uh, subject for an extreme extrovert. In case you hadn't noticed. Um, anyway, I started my career. Well, I actually started. Well, what did I do? put my teeth in. We moved around a lot in Norway because my p parents always got jobs as teachers running uh, in a new, co new place every couple of years. That's a bit odd to see yourself down there. So we moved around a lot when I was, uh, when I was young. When I was about eight, we moved down south to the, the tropics of Norway. You know, we call it that in the north, where the weather is always nice. At least I remember the weather as nice. It's nice in winter as well when it's snowing, right? At 13, my parents uh, rooted us up. When I uh, was 13, we went to Africa to live there for a couple of years where my teachers, my parents were teachers. God, they must be my teachers, my life teachers or something. So that was a fantastic experience to go to a local school there, see how schooling was done. This is a long time before digital, but, you know, you learn along the way. Itchy feet were born and I ended up studying in the UK and then back to Norway. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about that journey, because in that journey, what I've learned is that with everything we do in life, education is at the core of it. And I think that it's really important. You know, I've worked, I started my, my, my work career in Norway, working for the big, nasty corporate software companies, like the oracles and control datas of this world. And then I moved into smaller companies that were global, which is kind of my sweet spot, where it's uh, 100 to 200 people that we work globally and we can work with people across the globe. 
actually get the opportunity to move to Australia because of Oracle, so you know, I, I'm not bagging them too much with that. So I, I landed in Sydney. I'd never been to Australia before, actually. Thought I'd come out for a couple of years, fell in love with the climate. You know, this is the real tropics compared to the Norwegian trop tropics. And then in about two, 2004, I contacted a friend in, the, in Perth from Sydney to say, oh, you know, um, uh, do, where, where can I buy an investment property? And he goes, oh, maybe you want to move over here. And that's when I met the mining industry, so mining software industry. That's all there is in Perth, well, I thought until just a, about a year ago. But uh, in the last uh, five years or so, I've had my own digital health startup, and at the same time contracted in digital health, delivering uh, primary care services to remote and rural Australia. So I do understand how important education is as part of delivering health and quality of life to people, specifically in, in um, cultures that are not as connected as we are centrally. So, I am inspired to deliver quality uh, education to every adult and child in the world, but I also think that it needs to be powered by people and technology together, so bringing that real connection between people and technology. I know that Rowan already said this, but <laughs> I, I, I see my role as uh, to empower and enable and inspire my colleagues to work together and to work with the community to deliver. Moodle products that address real-world problems and so that we can actually create a sustainable business and reach more people. I shouldn't be looking at that one, should I? So one of the things that I, I've learned about Moodle today is that we have a bunch of really awesome people, inspired and inspiring people. We have a product with a large and dedicated community that just want to help the world, to inspire the world to, to improve. And then we're continuously experimenting with our processes and involving people in that process. I'll come back to that one. So a little bit about the teams. Unfortunately, I hadn't joined at this time. I think it was just before I, um, before I joined. I'll go through just the product teams for now, although you have pressed. So most of you guys are probably most familiar with Moodle Core, or the LMS, the Core LMS, which is led by Sander Bangma. Uh, in Perth, we have team members in Perth and in Spain and in the Czech Republic and Belgium and Netherlands and US. Oh, I th Sanders updated my slide, I can see. <laughs> um, so we've got a team of 22 people there and I, I put in the numbers, but this is the core system that's underpinning all uh, our, teaching and learning, uh, our teaching and learning platform. Then we've got the Moodle Workplace product. I don't know, a few of you guys were uh, upstairs. It's really about the organization and learning, uh, learning and development, and it's based on the core LMS with plugins, and it's streamlined or, or um, fine-tuned for organization and learning and development. We have a team primarily based in Spain, but we've got team members in the UK and Brazil as well. So you can see we're a truly global organization. Eight people in that team, I think it's, it's not actually, it's seven, counting again. We also have an apps team, a tiny little apps team that look after the apps both for, um, both for, the, for Moodle LMS and for um, Workplace. And we have in that, so if anybody's looking f to have a, uh, their own presence in the app store and things, we have a branded app. So you can either run the standard app or a branded app over the top of it. You can see I've borrowed Martin's uh, pretty pictures from this morning. Our Moodle Cloud product, if, in, if you haven't uh, had an opportunity to, to meet um, Lee, he's our new product manager in, uh, uh, for Moodle Cloud. So he's here at the fair. He's been with us for, I think it's his fourth week now, so he's uh, one of the lucky ones that get to meet you all uh, in his first month. Then we've got Moodle Net now. Who's, who here knows about Moodle Net? Oh, that's not so much. So it's... Um, I expected all of you to say yes. <laughs> so MiddleNet is a, is a social platform that uh, enables uh, educators to share, curate, and discuss uh, educational resources. Um, it's currently in beta. It, we've validated some of the, the assumptions around it, and, um, and we're launching it in, at the Global Moot in Barth Barcelona. Barcelona. Um, it's a very tiny little team, and it's run quite differently to how we run Moodle LMS. You know, we've got, 
with the LMS, we've got so many customers and users across the world uh, that we, the, the ones that we know about is 100,000 sites and 150 million users, but those are just the ones that have voluntarily registered for the product. This one, tiny little team, no, no customers, no users yet, well, apart from the ones that are on, on the test systems. Uh, so we could run this process very differently. It's very experimental, it's very lean uh, in the process there. Uh, Moodle Education, you, you must have all met the lovely Solange here today. Tiny little team, mostly in, 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 in North America, I should say. But we do have a few uh, virtual team members across the, uh, across the organization. Basically, that is our uh, competence-based, uh, research-informed uh, education program. How many of you guys were in the, in the session yesterday here? Quite a few. Yay! Did you enjoy it? Did you learn something? <laughs> Says the facilitators are here. Great job by the facilitators and Solange. Uh, we also have a UX team, and I'm going to talk briefly about that. As you can see, I'm the acting lead for that. Um, so um, typically, we would have empowered multidiscipline teams that would work together. So you'd have designers and developers working together. Uh, we've chosen to have a, uh, an affinity or an alignment between all the UX people across, across the, uh, the organization. So Ash, Barbara, and Hina are all based in Perth, so they primarily work with the core and LMS system and the Moodle cloud system. We've got Rafael, that's, uh, that's our UX UI designer developer for Workplace. He's quite, uh, he, he has a lot of experience. He's worked with Emilio, who is our product manager in partners and delivering workplace solutions in the past. And Ivan is our Moodle net front end developer and UX designer. So, uh, But for each project that we work on in Moodle core or any of the products now, we will assign a UX developer. So they have plenty to do. You should see Ash and Barbara, um, sorry, Ash and Hina are, have been around here for the whole time. And tomorrow, if you're interested in, in a user experience and how we do that. We've got a session tomorrow called the user in the Moodle. Um, right, I'm going to talk about roadmap processes. So we always think of roadmaps as a straight road forward, right? That's a roadmap. It's all very linear, because linear, all roads are very linear. If any of you have ever been to the north of Norway, you know that roads aren't necessarily linear. They go like that, around the fjords and around the mountains. But, and I don't even know what's around the corner there. The typical um, roadmap is based on output. So it's typically a list of prioritized features that we want to develop. It's typically done on a regular basis, on a quarterly basis. I'm not saying these things are bad. I'm just saying that they don't always work. And they come down from management. So what happens is that they're very linear. The, somebody comes up with an idea, then the management decides that it's got to happen, then the UX team work on it, and then they come up with the designs and and they do the testing of the designs, and then they chuck it over the fence to the developers, and the developers go, what? And we've got some really awesome developers, both in the community and within Moodle HQ all together. But it's kind of that linear thing. And then it comes to the end, and we're just about to release, and it goes to the QA cycle, to the QA team. And then they're going, oh! and documentation, oh, I've got to make this work now, sort of thing. So, it can be a bit challenging at, at times, and it's also, you know, it can lack buy-in, and it, it's not very empowering for the team. So what we're trying to do is actually change that around and get involvement much earlier from the developers as, and the designers and working together across teams with our customers and with our community as well. Because sometimes we actually forget that not all our product ideas work. Because you can have a brilliant idea. I reckon if I do this fantastic feature, and that could come from anywhere. It could come from a teacher, it could come from an administrator, it could come from a developer, it could come from a product manager. <laughs> Heavens forbid, a product manager who hasn't done their research, right? But they don't always work, and there's only a small percentage. So you need to test and validate, test and validate. That's why it's been really interesting to watch what we do with MoodleNet at the moment. That's off. Um, with, I have a timer here and it's off. <laughs> 
So it's been interesting to watch what uh, what uh, Moodle Net are doing with in a much more sort of iterate, much faster iterations in the development because they don't actually have to look after all the customers that are there already. We we need to validate the customer value and make sure that customers are and then even when you've got a really damn good idea, like for example, group messaging. I think it's a great idea. Group messaging that we came out with in 3.6, I believe. But it still takes multiple iterations to get it right. right? Now, there are, there's a reason that we do have roadmaps. We, de we need to make sure that we're working on what's the highest value to be first. And we also need to have some sort of a time-based view of it. And this is why most roadmaps are reviewed on a quarterly basis, which is something that we will continue to do. We obviously need to address all of these issues. Now, we all know that roads aren't necessarily straight, right? You don't have to go to Norway to find curvy roads. And what I've found at Moodle is that I kind of inherited a, a, a product foot portfolio of uh, six very different products, right? All the, th all the way from a core, open source, massive. I, I don't want to say old. Can I say wise about a system? I usually use wise instead of old, but um, <laughs> you know, a system that has grown over years and has had a lot of contributions. So we've got that as the core LMS. Then we've got the refined version of it that's specialized for workplace. Then we've got MoodleNet that's brand new. And then we've got educational content and curriculum. And I'm going, whoa, what hit me here? I was, I, was, I, was, I was developing a system that was there to break down the silos in the, in the child, care, uh, child health space. <laughs> and I was going, whoa, I thought that was hard. This one's more complicated, but we are addressing the same kind of needs. So I think one of the, the aspects that we've always worked with is actually outcomes-based roadmaps. So roadmaps that are focused on the, you know, the uh, object, objectives and key results and focused on business objectives. So business objectives, product vision that drives the roadmaps. And in a way that it ensures that all the product ideas are aligned with our business um, objectives so that we can empower the product teams. And it's really, really important to empower the product teams, the product teams that consist of the developers, the designers, the product managers, and the users per se. <clears throat> I usually say that I try to get the right mix. So the right people, the right product, and the right process. And would you believe it, that other slide that I had up earlier, I wrote that before I wrote this one, sort of magically. So we do have inspiring and, <laughs> and inspired people in the organization and in the community. And I think we can make that product absolutely right for a number of different, uh, different uh, needs, if you like, so that if we slice and package our product up for, like we've done now with Workplace, we could do that for higher education, we could do that for K-12. We can work with our partners to make sure that it's easier for them to roll out and create value-add services for our customers to create, val uh, create value for their learners and basically uh, uh, get, um, get education out to as many people as possible. And then, as I said, we are continuing to experiment with our processes. I just wanted to reuse my slide that I made earlier. So there are some key drivers to what I want to do here, because one of the things that we tend to forget, and I've, I have worked, you know, I hate to say this, but I have worked in, in the software industry for over 30 years. No matter how good our intentions are, because all our, in, our intentions are usually good, we want to solve problems, but then we jump straight to, to, to solutions and go, well, let's do it this way. And so we forget to look at the risks first. And you have to get the risks up front. Specifically when you're doing product development, that's not just for a single customer. And then we need to remember that defining and designing products is a collaborative process. It's not that linear process. It's not something that somebody can't, well, you know. So where's Martin? There you are. You have come up with some awesome ideas through the years and, we, and managed to deliver them, but I do still think that it's been a collaborative process between you and the community and the developers always. So what I'm trying to do is like, tap into that, use that, and have a little bit more intentionality as you'll see towards then. And then I want to talk about solving problems rather than just developing features, again, uh, uh, because we tend to chase features and we tend to chase features, and we've been doing that a lot. And Martin touched on it briefly this morning, that we might not go for so many new features. We'll probably look, we're looking at, let's get 
things right for the things that we're doing, like let's make it really, really, really good, uh, but still do some new features. Because you, you always have to keep on innovating and coming up with new things and working with the community and partners and plug-in developers and integration partners, as you did. Uh, <clears throat> so there's four types of risks that, I've, um, that I typically look at. The first one is really about the customer value. If you develop something that the customer doesn't need, you're kind of dead in the water, right? So what do we have to do to... Uh, to ensure that the customer would buy it or choose to use it. And then we have a massive focus on user experience. I know it's been a critique sometimes of products like Moodle. I'm not saying Moodle particularly, but products that are that configurable, because, which is awesome because you can make it to do, do whatever you like. Uh, but it's kind of hard to design it for, um, for a f fantastic user experience. And then, of course, that's that, that big thing. Can we actually build it? Is it feas technically feasible to build this product? Let's get the developers in on the process very early in the, in, in the process. And then, obviously, does it, uh, does it uh, work for our business? Is this something that we need to do? Is it aligned with our, with our visions and, uh, vision and, uh, and business objectives? So customer value, what does that really mean? You know, we can... I've seen so many beautiful products developed through the times, but it doesn't actually solve a problem for a customer, right? It looks great, they go, oh, that's really nice, that's really what I need, and then you get to the end and they didn't actually need it anyway, so you can't, there's no uptake for it. So it's really about understanding who we're developing for, what problem we're solving for, for them, and why we need to solve those problems. Not just about developing cool products. Usability, how do they use it? How can we you know, keep on doing user, user testing, uh, user research first, find out about the, the problem, uh, test our prototypes, test, uh, do user interviews, do usability testing at the end, but you need, really need to make sure that they can use it. You guys can talk to, I, I keep looking over at our developers, but there's plenty of other developers here, but it's, you know, it's hard to develop stuff if you don't know who it's for as well. So I think that understanding what they, who the customer persona is, the user persona is, who's going to be using it, what their skill sets are, it's really important. And then whether it's actually technically possible to do it. Uh, and then obviously the business viability, is it in line with our business objectives? Oh. Going back to that. So I wanted to put our product, uh, our process at a glance. So the first thing we do is we collect ideas. We've done this for years. We keep collecting ideas. We've got so many ideas. They're coming out of our ears sometimes. But we've got so many ideas from you guys, from the community in general, from the forums, from Tracker. We'll go a bit through that. And then we need to validate those ideas. And that's kind of where we get into the, OK, who's it for, and things. Then we prioritize ideas. We look at that typically internally, but we take input from, um, from our community on that. We want to get you guys even more engaged in that process. And finally, deliver products. So I think to date, although we've kind of done all these things, we've not done it intentionally. So what we want to do is over the next, uh, next few weeks, I'll be posting up uh, what the what the process is, where we need you guys to get in, well, where we would like to invite you guys to be, get involved with our process and give us input and help us prioritize. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll keep that up to date. So it's more about the process than actually promising we're going to have this particular feature ready at this time, you know, because we might find, and this is, I, I come from a startup world as well, so it's kind of that lean startup thing and go, okay, well, hang on, that didn't work. So, that wasn't the right choice then, so that, that's also an okay choice. You know, you, you spend two weeks on something or two months on something, and then you realize, hang on, this isn't actually working. It's okay to make that decision that it's not the right thing to do. So you guys be all familiar with that, but we do, we're, we're doing a lot more market research, competitive analysis. We get input from our partners. Anybody at Moodle who has an idea, whether it's a a developer, a designer, or a Martin, or me, or Solange, or Fiona at the back here. 
there. Um, so, uh, so anybody can come up with ideas. We look at the priorities that the Moodle partners give us. Uh, they have an opportunity to do that in the system. We look at analysis of RFIs, you know, so uh, tenders and things for, from, uh, from, um, from uh, higher education, for example. There's a, you know, there's a few players out there that, uh, that, um, um, that are, are, are selling in a different way to what we've done because Moodle is so configurable and you can use it for anything and others are kind of going in and, and knocking on our doors, of our, on the doors of our customers, I'm sure. I've heard from a few people here over the last couple of days. Um, have you got uh, many people from the, who are members of Moodle User Association here? One, two, three, four. Oh, good, good to see. Because by being a member of the Moodle User Association, you actually have the opportunity to vote in a different way and vote on projects and, and be part of that process. So that's kind of one way of being involved as well. And finally, what Martin's doing directly after this, the Moodle Moot brainstorm wish list, so brainstorm sessions, which I can't wait to participate in and, and see, uh, see how they run. When it comes to validating the ideas, I've already gone through this in, in some sense. Well, we start with the why. So why would the customer use it and why should we do it? But I think the core thing that we need to look at is really who is our customer? Who is the user? Can we actually um, understand what job they're doing? And by that, I don't mean being on their screen, uh, on their keyboard, I should say, not tapping on their screen, although some people might do. Um, it's not how they use the product in itself. It's actually what problem they're trying to solve. Are they trying to engage their uh, students? You know, are they trying to use uh, to talk to somebody that's in a remote and rural area that doesn't have access to the internet all the time? So it's about getting that uh, narrative up and understanding what that is, and then so so that should then inform uh, our ideas with the. Prioritization, we need to be driven by product vision. I have written up the product vision. I'm going to publish all these things over the next couple of weeks. Um, the product vision for all the different products, how they're all linked together and things. Linking things with the business objectives. And then we have a combined criteria that we've set up, which is about business sustainability, how it aligns with our business goals and objectives, what the demand is, what the effort is, and what the risk is. So that's actually something that we do internally amongst the management team at, at uh, Moodle, and then we'll publish that out to the wider community uh, once we've gone through that process. We're not quite there yet. We haven't quite landed. Well, I haven't quite landed the process and got it out to you guys yet. So um, uh, that's, that's my number one, one task. I've uh, now got the whole right team working on their individual things, and they're starting to converge as well. So I, 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 I like the space we're in now. It's been a bit of a scramble, because I had, um, when I came on board, there was three products that were launching in the first three months of 2019. So um, were, I wasn't doing it myself, but I was kind of trying to understand all the products and support the teams in getting these products out. We've done it. We're getting better and better. And then uh, in the end, I keep talking about empowered teams, but I just think it's so important. They understand the risks. They understand what the customer value is. They are driven by the product vision and the business objectives. But working together and bringing in the big, bigger teams from the community. OK, so this is as close as you'll get to a roadmap now. We're going to talk about some key projects and product timelines. There we go. We have some themes that we're working, or initiatives that we're working across the products. Guess what? Engage community. The other one is, where's my UX designers? Oh, there, oh, there's one. I've lost one. <laughs> so, oh, there you are. Couldn't see you behind all these people. Thank you. <laughs> so. I call it delighting our users. We want to delight our, uh, our educators. We want to delight our uh, course creators so that they create engaging learning experiences for their learners. We want to deliver customer value, so basically understanding the customer problem. We're working on learning analytics across the board. What do we need to capture and what, do we need to, uh, what are the metrics we need to, to, to capture in the system? Accessibility, as, have I spelled that right? 
Yeah. Um, accessibility is something that's uh, coming around, uh, that, 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 that's going to be uh, regulated and, 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 and compliance tested. And then some of the key things that are saying the integration and interoperability between our own products, but also with other products. So some of the integration partners um, uh, that we're rolling in with the product and making, hopefully creating, better value both for, the, par for the, the other partners and for our customers, um, but also integrating our own products. So basically MoodleNet into, into Moodle Core, using Moodle LMS or a Core for, for our MEC and using MEC to sell, uh, sell no, I don't mean sell as in sell for money necessarily, but like set up the system and, and educate people in the use of the product. And finally, the one thing that's now coming together for me is that all our products are starting to converge again. So, uh, so that's, uh, that helps me. <laughs> Maybe it's not so important to everybody else, but I can see you know, uh, both the LMS and, and uh, Workplace and Moodle Cloud and uh, Moodle Net, so, so they're coming together. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to quickly go through the product vision for, for each one of the products. So, to be the number one open source teaching and learning platform, I think we are globally. So no surprises there, I hope. So this, I just set up this. This is kind of like the closest we get right now because we want some more input on where we're going over the next few, um, few years. So we have delivered 3.6 and 3.7 already. Um, some of the, so the, the forum project is kind of one of the big projects that we've been working on. So that started out with the re-architecting. We're working with the Moodle User Association on that. So as you can see there for our 3.8 delivery, we are specifically working on the advanced forums. So building on the re-architecting that we did for 3.7. We have focus on H5P. Anybody here want H5P? I thought so. Important stuff. So, um, so the team has, uh, has done an initial assessment. They started working on it. They're working with the with the with the um, plugin that's there, but also looking at how we integrate it even more. Martin is heavily involved with that because this is one of his passion projects. Martin gets to decide one project per release, right? <laughs> Most of them. Then I try to let the team decide the rest. Um, but learning analytics is another key area that we're kind of looking at more and more to uh, evolve and work with you guys. So one of the things we're looking at is kind of like a smart bot or a student assistant to, uh, to come in. Don't know if we're landing it in 3.8 because we've just decided in the last couple of weeks that we're just going to focus on a couple of key projects. And then we are looking at, um, you can see at the bottom there, the continuous improvement activity chooser. Anybody? Uh, love the activity chooser in its current form? Oh, anybody not love the activity chooser in their current form? <laughs> so, so that's, that, and we've done some work, some initial uh, work on that and some initial um, designs that we'll be testing out for that. Relative dates, so relative to when the, the, the course started and relative to when the, the student uh, started. We're trying to look at these ones may not all land in 3.8 or in the next, uh, what is it, 15 weeks or something, <laughs> 70 odd days. Uh, but we are doing the planning for the next releases. So what we're trying to do here is a, a, a process of continuous, uh, a, a continuous discovery and delivery. So we're, while we're working on the others, we're still we're, we're planning out the next ones for, for the next releases. Um, all right, on to workplace. So. I always do them in this order. It might not make sense to everybody else. It does to me. Um, it's really to be the number one platform for organizational learning and development, but building on Moodle LMS uh, platform uh, with work workplace specific features and benefits. So what we did this year was we had the MVP announcement and we've just done the production ready versions, that version that's with our um, key partners, that the partners that have been involved in the development, you all know that it's uh, Moodle Workplace is a collaborative project between Moodle HQ and partners um, uh, who 
wanted to be involved with it. They've gone through, they've assessed what, which, uh, and, and a lot of these partners have extensive experience in organizational learning and development or corporate learning. And so we've taken the, the brains trust and worked with them. I'm not saying that others couldn't have been involved in that, but we've worked with them very closely to get that key, uh, the core set of functionality that was required for, for workplace learning. And so our first version, 3.7, so you can see we have the same versioning as for the LMS because there are dependencies there has the, those key features and it's an entry level product but it's really nice and smooth and and uh, what you call it tidy a tidy user experience it's got a theme that's specific for workplace it's targeting workplace it's got uh, course formats and course templates that are useful for that so our next stage is really about delivering more migra migration tools more integration integration with the lms and recertification which is linked to the others I have put as a placeholder on all of these ones now that we will be working with the community partners and customers to determine what the best priority is. We've got a whole long, long, long wish list for all the products of, of things we think we should be doing, but we actually want to work with you guys to validate those ones. Does anybody here have a branded app for the... So we've got a whole apps team in, in Spain, but does anybody have... I know there is one customer here that has a branded app, but I don't know if he's still around here. So do you know what a branded app is? Yeah? yeah. Anybody not know what branded apps are? Okay, well then I don't need to explain it. Right? What we do is we basically take the standard app, which is there, so that we can, we can ensure that people who don't necessarily have access to networks at all times can, access, can download and access their, their courses so we can bring learning to, to regions and places where people don't, don't have, um, wouldn't normally have access to it uh, while they're not at school. And then we can take the, the branded app is a version of that, a little bit more advanced features, but it also allows the institution or the organization to have their own branding on it and their own app in the app store so that it's, a, I guess, for larger insti uh, educational institutions, it would be a, a sales tool, if you like, to, 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 to get overseas students in, for example. But talk to Fiona if you guys are looking after, want one of those things and our partners. So it's aligned with uh, LMS, but we're looking at some improved uh, features for the branded app. So we're doing a campaign at the moment to generate awareness and leads around it, but we're also looking at identifying pro features. So we are working with some of our, so for example, for the, the, the workplace app, we'll be doing a manager view. For higher education, we're looking at doing a teacher view that will allow you to do the more grading and more uh, setup and things while you're on the go as an educator. And then we're, we're doing some partner en enablement on that. Okay, Moodle Cloud, we want to provide the most affordable, robust and easy to use Moodle hosting for small to medium sized organizations. So, so at the moment we've got a few different packages there. We're looking at creating more packages, simplified onboarding. Did anybody find it? Uh, super easy to sign up and set up their Moodle Cloud site. One person found it really easy. Two, three. Oh, that's good. I'm happy. But you guys are the experts. So we are doing some work to simplify the user experience and, and, uh, and, uh, and um, make the onboarding easier. But the other thing as well, we're, we're doing some, uh, I guess, purpose-built packages for different, uh, different uh, uh, customers. But we'll be working with the partners. No, I'd encourage you guys to go and have a look at the MoodleNet uh, resources that we've got online, especially for the educators. It's a, it's, it's a whole different kind of Moodle, but it actually brings the Moodles of the world together, so you can share, uh, share resources in a, I was going to say in a fun way, but <laughs> in, a, in a way that you haven't been able to do before because it's, it's a federated system, so it links in with your different Moodles there. That's, uh, we're launching that in uh, later this year. It'll be integrated Moodle so that you can, uh, uh, so you can share and load resources into Moodle. At the moment, we're running some controlled pilots for that. Uh, to be the preferred uh, curriculum and accreditation program for the digital competences for educational institutions and trading organizations worldwide. We've been working with a bunch of partners. I don't know if you've talked about focus groups, but we're working with some focus groups to get 
input and feedback to the system there. We are looking how we can work with you guys to reuse the, f the fabric, if you like, of this and cut new patterns in it. Maybe we can even tailor it for you guys, huh? How can you guys help? We need to work with people to, uh, to make sure that we verify the customer problems and needs so that we can understand the customer value and help our partners help you to get the right uh, tools out there and, and uh, I guess, uh, engage learners and provide uh, quality education. So that would be user interviews, it might be testing, it might be writing up, test, checking our requirements and that sort of stuff. We have some designers here, didn't we? I saw so there was people that put up their hands. If you're into UX design or UI design, please uh, reach out to us and uh, we have only a tiny little team of designers so we can always do with more there. UX and usability testing, this is critical. This is about seeing what features, you know, as, as we're developing them and coming up with new designs. So it's early access to prototypes, giving input into the product, product direction, so that we can decide on that together. Functionality testing, I don't know. Do any of you guys get involved in this QA cycle for the LMS? I'm happy to hear that some people get involved with that. We can always do with more people. We run a process right at the end. We'll be running much more of that throughout because we're getting more agile again. So we'll be churning out functionality and asking people to get involved with testing, but we will be uh, reaching out to see if we can get, get people specifically involved with that. And for the developers in the room, we want you to work with us on the key projects. On the, on, on, the, uh, on the roadmap priorities. And, <clears throat> and that can be our key projects, but it can also be specific. So we might go and say, well, we're going to work on database now for, uh, as an activity now for the next uh, two sprints. Or let, I might not say now. In two sprints, we're going to work on database, for example. I'm, I'm not saying that that's going to be the one that we do, but we might be working on that from a usability and from a development perspective and getting people involved. So it's... it's it's about having some intent around the products that we're working on. Social proof. So nobody buys anything nowadays unless they, or unless they hear it from their friends, they hear it from people that they trust. So if you are having good experiences with Moodle, please go out there and give us a review on Captera or, or other uh, products, or, or just give us some testimonials. We are always looking for case studies. And here's my favorite. I want to work. So one of the techniques that you can use to actually identify the customer needs is to, you can write a, um, a press release in advance, but I actually really like the customer reference letter. So you start working, you can invent your own customer future customer reference letter, or you can, um, uh, you can actually work directly with customers. So I'd love to work with the partners in the room and with customers in the room who are looking to go to to use a new feature and then let's work out and write the requirements in forms of, in form of a thank uh, of a reference letter in advance before we've done it because that gives us intent for our development intent for our design if you do want to get involved we've got a web page called on moodle.com called get involved it asks a little bit about your role and what you do and then we'll, we'll be contacting people about specific projects for that you're going to start yes <laughs>